Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy looking styling in silver. I never noticed just how cool this looks. How metallic his pants are. That looks really like it doesn't breathe and like you can't really bend your legs much. Uh, welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time we experienced all that Chapter 1 had to offer in New Game Plus. Now we go into Chapter 2. We shipwrecked in Wreck Marshland and we're going to continue on further. As we do, we're gonna go look for our cat stuck in a tree. Oh, I don't know if I properly took in this view. The underside of the Gormati Titan, great way to start you off. It's pretty, uh, pretty linear in design, so you can't really get lost quite yet. It makes the open field up ahead just feel so much big and special and open, and you realize just how impactful a lot of these areas are gonna be, and it's beautiful to boot, it's great. I call upon the power of fire. I didn't see your lips move, Pyra. Oh, sh oh, whoa! <laughs> I was off of that cliff. I was completely off of it. I should not have lived there, and yet I did. Look up above, this fog, this ambiance. It's surprisingly distinct from the rest of the Titan, and even just the rest of the game. There's not another area like this, and it just goes to show that if you look around with different camera angles, you can grow to appreciate right. new things even this far in. <laughs> Rex! What are you doing here? My lady, now is our chance. Let's attack. All right, then. That Brog knows what's coming, and let me tell you. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the rear. In the rear. In the... No, Nia! You screwed up my screwing. Nia has joined the party, and she has her own hidden affinity that we can go into. 10,000 skill points. Nia has chance recovery, heals 25 HP each time a chain attack is initiated. I'm gonna get to that one in just a second. Transmit power, boosts recharge for specials after canceling by 20%, that's good. Adrenaline, restores 3% HP when canceling an auto attack with a driver art. So we gotta talk about these three skills. This one here in the middle is good, but this one and that one, we're gonna have to do a dressing down. Self-healing with passive skills. Sounds really great, but let me ask you this. How often is Nia actually not healing enough to keep herself alive? Not that often. Even with just Dromark, she's pretty consistent. These skills have permanent negative synergy with blades that she works well with, like a Azami. Constantly healing herself makes it so that she stays out of those low HP ranges so that she can do lots and lots of damage with a blade like a zombie. And there's some other legitimately good effects on equipment that require your HP to be low. You might want to just never teach these three skills to leave your options open if you plan on using Driver Nia still in late game content. Filling in the extra affinity chart only gives one ultimate weaponry. It's not another overdrive protocol. So the reward's not even worth it. You might as well just not. Tiger's Eye boosts dexterity by 10%. Cheerleader, not cheerleader, uh, increases affinity by 25% after winning a special button challenge. Road to Victory fills the party gauge for each critical hit delivered much better. Focus Technique reduces enemy break resistance. Hey, we didn't do half bad. Instantly. Boosts either by 10% and Sore Loser. <laughs> Throw in shade, Takahashi. Uh, it just goes to show you, Takahashi hates you if you're a gray-haired girl and your name ends in A. Uh, she, uh, gets the unbeatable status from Tora, uh, that Tora normally has. Lithe Strength, Lithe Strength, gives, uh, 20, uh, 20 more strength. Lady of Luck is 10% more luck. Bare Knuckles is 10% more strength. Lucky Cat, ooh, I like these names. Uh, 20%, uh, 20 more luck. Uh, Wild Life, <laughs> Wild Life, 10% more max HP. And Tiger Girl, boosts agility by 10%. Mostly stat buffs in here, nothing too thrilling, honestly. I think that they knew it wasn't too likely that you'd be using Nia for her driver skills. So she's not as exciting as Rex is. Back during our first visit to this place, I mentioned the 10 minute long presentation that was in that Nintendo Direct where they had Gramps explaining the world of Xenoblade 2. And everyone thought it was boring and hated it and thought this game looked terrible before release. Meanwhile, I was over here, holy poop! It's Xenoblade and they added an on-screen timer to show how long an enemy's toppled for? Best game ever! 
There are two kinds of people in this world. <laughs> As we make our way up to the upper level of the Titan, the unique monster battle theme that plays when fighting unique monsters in Gormot and Uriah, those who stand against our path. In the digital iTunes release of the, sound of the official soundtrack, they accidentally uploaded an early version of this song that uses a synthesizer at certain points. It's an unused song that's not even found in the game data. Have a listen. looking cool because it's a one-hit attack, it's slow to charge up, has a long animation, not good for time attack, unfortunately. Just not that strong. <laughs> Nia dancing in the back there. Yeah, not much purpose. It's cool, a sing high single hit damage. For how long it takes to build up, it just doesn't do a lot, is the problem. And in fact, I also want to talk about another way that Numa kind of falls off. I talked about how she doesn't gain any more auto attack, and she's got about 1,100 in total. The other problem that she runs into is as you get higher trust points, you get more uh, damage from specials as a passive effect as a result of having higher trust. Numa's not able to take advantage of this, so it's yet another way that Mithra and especially Hyra just get better special and blade combo damage. As I do it again, I want you to watch the sword as it expands after the burst of light. This is the same move that Rex and Numa use to finish off Malos in the ending. It's them becoming able to do this normally. Because Numa is perpetually at zero trust, Pyra vastly outperforms her for uh, specials and especially blade combo damage. And Mithra can outperform her as well. So her low auto attack and being at perpetually zero trust kind of hurts her. Now for something that a lot of people think about when going through it again. You know your way around Torigoth now, and the game very much pushes you to go in that direction. It's the natural direction of progress, you don't know your way around the Titan yet. But that water tower is still standing over this way. That's where Torigoth Relay Base is, and there's a crowd of people oh. to prevent you from going that way first so that you get pushed into the corner and fight Bridget and Nia gets captured and all that stuff. What happens if we go around the back of Torigoth and enter that way? So there's that water tower up close. It's a lot taller than it looks in the cutscene. Not what I was expecting. It's even over the water, so... The Aegis must be very powerful, because wow, that's, uh... It looks smaller in the cutscene. I swear to you, it does. Right over this way, there's normally a staircase. And, uh... Yeah, it's just under construction. They made it so the staircase has a split in it, and you can't go up that way. Huh. Nope, can't jump that. Not with all the shop deeds in the world. Huh. Swear if I unlocked Telos' new skill while attempting this in vain. And arrived. <laughs> There's no other way up into Torigoth. No going around the back. What about using this ladder to run along the rooftops and get past the crowd that way? Yep, ladder's broken. <laughs> Those damn guards haven't gotten around to repairing it yet. You can perpetually fall in this one area because the collision on it's kind of wonky. Don't forget me! Don't forget me! Such 
a commotion. Just when I thought I could enjoy a little- Her pizza. hair is green apple flavored and looks even oh, more Bridget. delicious. Bridget. Bridget. Sadly, it does she not affect her flame color. I wish it did. A driver. My driver is otherwise engaged. Don't let them escape! Get after them! That's right, Rex. Run and never look back. This way! Friends, come this way! <laughs> I was stalking you, Pyra! <laughs> who are you? Quick! I already know who you are! The snorkel is so I can stalk you from inside of a pond. Do you recall me ever telling you to capture some little girl with barely a bounty on her head? But, sir, she's a member of Torna. I'll see it. Yes, soon. sir, she's a member of Torna. <laughs> Hashtag Padrag did nothing wrong. What is it? Haven't you heard of knocking? My apologies, sir. It's just that Lady Morag has... What? Special Inquisitor Morag has just arrived from the Motherland. Already? Her ship has just docked. This... this cannot be happening! Are you ready to see the coolest thing ever? That is dress uniform Morag. You live down here. <laughs> Her hair is so cool. This just back She only hides it under a hat there. because she's so cool that she doesn't need those extra Makes points sense. from it. Whoa. But you, is you can make her overkill. I just thought of a great menu idea. Look forward to that later. Oh, Pyra unlearns all of her cook. It's not like you were ever going to cook any of this crap anyway. <laughs> it's oh, not man. bad. This is delicious. There's a reason why this wasn't even in my notes oh. for a thing that changes. This far back, subplots were a Bruin. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? Oh yeah, I heard something interesting. Apparently the Torna member that the Empire captured was some Gormati girl called Nia. Nia. That name seems familiar somehow. Didn't the old Lord of Echil a decade ago or so have... Actually, let's not talk about it. It's not a happy thing to think about. Thanks! With all the tact Rex has when it comes to Nia. Treasure acquired. Remember to open that chest for an overdrive protocol. Tiger Tiger High scores carry over. Tora has officially joined the party, and to start off, he only has Poppy Alpha. Kind of a letdown, honestly. Uh, I kind of wish he had QT from the start, but he does not. So, what I want to do right now is give him his usual pouch items, and get into Tora's hidden affinity. Keen Recovery is 3% HP restoration when canceling an auto attack with a driver art. Unlike Nia, however, Poppy's skills are a lot more set in stone and her role is a lot more defined because Tora can't just equip any old blades. I don't think this is quite as bad on him. Team Mascot. Increases affinity by 25% after winning a special button challenge. Poppy Care. Boosts recharge for specials after canceling by 20%. Good. Hidden Talent. Increases Ether by 20. Nop on Topple Arts. Extends Topple Duration by 15%, making him an even better driver combo spammer. Inherent protein, boost strength by 20%. You know, those nop on, high in protein. Forced initiative, increase damage by a surprise attack. Super restless foot, increase agility by 10%. Ah, twitching and itchy. Burgeoning talent, he actually has some ether buffs there. Nop on rescue service, increases the HP restored when reviving a teammate by 15%. Given that Tora has the highest natural HP and will often be the last left alive, Look over there! In, uh, reduces enemy break resistance. I want that as well. Nop on chain boost. Adds 20% to the damage ratio after canceling an auto attack. Good three skills right here. Restless foot. Agility up by 20, by 20. 
Hope for the best. Slightly fills the party gauge when an excellent is scored during a special. And Mood Maker. Slightly fills the party gauge for each critical hit delivered. I'm going to start by going for the extended topple duration. Wow, wow. And I know me, I'm going to want that reduced break resistance eventually. Wow, wow. And by eventually, I mean now. Now I'm going to go for the topple duration because we don't need the higher break resistance on these weak enemies that we're fighting. Huh. Oh! <sighs> Tor is always just barely missing his skills. I've told you many a time to not so, grind up Poppy Cutie Pie because there's a far better way of getting parts for her than playing Tiger Tiger. The time has come at last. I had several people telling me, hey, man, you're not making Poppy as good as she could be. I understand you're not wanting to be overpowered, but come on, you really need to get Poppy up as strong as she can get to show how good she is. It wasn't that I didn't want to, or I was trying to avoid being overpowered. It's just you don't need it for the standard playthrough. Only in the land of challenge does that really make a difference. This traveling bard, you wouldn't mind re uh, regaling uh, with a tale or two. I have an itching to compose a song on this Torigonda. I'll make it worth your while, of course. This one will give him 200,000 bonus EXP to get 20,000 ether crystals. I would advise not using this to purchase mods. There are other ways of getting mods later still. Yeah, there's still ways of upgrading Poppy that we have not unlocked yet. What I would recommend doing is using this to open up her other slots if you have not already. Could be useful for the later forms. Buy any kind of special enhancing ram or skill ram uh, that you don't already have. Affinity Max Barrier 3 and Outdoor Attack Up 3. What else do I have? I can go up to attack up, uh, Outdoor Attack Up 4. Uh, raising up her energy converter is also a lot more doable now that you can just buy 20,000 Aether Crystals from the Bard at any given time. You saw how long the 50,000 Aether Crystals from the DLC lasted us, and with how many we're able to buy from this guy alone, yeah, it's pretty good. If we go to Create Parts, strangely, technical manuals don't carry over. What a ripoff! We have to find all the technical manuals again to be able to make the same, to be able to make the same parts that we used to be able to make. Saying it one more time, just because I believe so strongly in it, don't use these crystals on mods. Use them on skill ram or specials. Or other upgrades. So now the time has come for the point in the game where we usually unlock the ability to awaken blades. We've been able to do this for a while. I think now we'll get started on it. There are several new blades that have become available. The only type of booster that is not helpful to your cause in getting these new blades is the justice booster. There are no blades left in the random pool that I can get that are light or dark element. To get the good stuff, you want compassion. The best new blades belong to this element, and this should be the one that you're boosting the most of all. I think I'm going to start off boosting, uh, let's do these ones. I'm going to run out of space and get more boosters from releasing blades anyway, so I might as well do five boosters even on a common core crystal. Uh, no, no, no. I should be doing at least rares. I have 98 of the suckers. I might as well. I'ma crack open core crystals until we see somebody new. Oh, oh, whoa, that was a big guy. Didn't want to come out and play with me, Orochi. What, the lightning head in the, it's the lightning head in the back that doesn't ever know what's going on because he's facing away from a Amaterasu. I wanted to say this the entire playthrough and just never had a good chance. Legendary core crystals suck. I'm being serious. I don't think casually playing this game at all on my first playthrough, I ever got a single rare blade from one of these stupid legendary core crystals. They increase your chances of finding a rare blade by three percent, by a three times, three percent, by three times. But the problem is there's so many more common and rare core crystals in the world than legendary that the sheer number of commons that I opened up offset that multiplier. And I just never got anything worthwhile out of them. I was getting everything from common gore crystals and occasionally rares. It bothered me so much. And I remember Derek Bittner, uh, he had the, uh, from uh, Good Vibes Gaming, uh, he had the game pre-release along with me and we were talking about it the whole way. He was saying the exact same thing. He's like, wow, so much for these legendary core crystals. I never get anything, I never get anything from them. And I agreed, it was so frustrating that these things apparently practically guarantee you rare blades the way that they make it sound 
and I just never got anything from them. In fact, most of the time the blades I would get weren't even three or four crown, they were usually just garbage. I used five boosters on rare or legendary core crystals until I ran out of boosters and I got nothing. The guy looks so funky, like, Ugh! he's so big he can't fit on screen so they distort him and it looks like he's doing some kind of freaky dance. Sivers turn to wreak untold havoc! <laughs> if I see anyone bawling, they'll get slapped, got it? <laughs> Right after we say goodbye to Malos and Sever as party members, Sever comes back round to turn coats. I'm glad that we're starting with you, actually. You're a good first blade. <laughs> Pleasure's all mine. No, no, no. Pleasure is all mine. Okay, so Sever. Sever is the first of our New Game Plus ex ex exclusive blades. And let me tell you, being able to play as the bad guys in some kind of alternate storyline or something like that, one of the coolest things that a game can do. It's something that impressed me the very first time I ever saw it as a kid in Sonic Adventure 2, and I still think super highly of that to this day. Um, so Sever has a sword Tonfa as his weapon. We've already talked about that all the way back on the second day of our adventure. Uh, this has a core chip that, is called, that gives him a weapon called Bringer of the Winds, increasing his strength by 50. However, this blade cannot modify its weapon. What you see is what you get. Those stats are permanent. The only stat that can be changed is auto attack from higher trust. I'm also glad that we're starting with you because you are probably the most underutilized main party member at any point in the story. Uh, out of everyone who got to be a party member even briefly, you didn't get much focus. Sever gives 20% physical defense, 30% ether defense, and 15% more strength. Solid stats. He has two aux core slots, and I would recommend equipping him quite differently. First off, we're gonna go for outdoor attack up five, and believe it or not, opening art five. Mm-hmm. It sounds bizarre, and is. We're gonna give Rex a legendary version of the Terror Mask. This is the best way to increase damage, uh, this is the best way to increase damage, but you take more damage in the process, thus making it not always a good choice. We don't really care about that, though. From the Land of Challenge, you can get an Abyss Mask, which is an even stronger version of this accessory. Technically, I am suboptimal here. I'm keeping my optical headband on to increase critical damage, and I'm gonna squeeze out a tiny bit more damage with a Legendary Master Attachment to increase damage by 14% of any weapon class. We're then going to use up our uh, weaponry items on the Sword Tonfa, getting it stronger. And we wanna level Gale Upper all the way up to level five. Got lucky because Rex was actually the driver I wanted him on. <laughs> Going into detail about his other attributes, every one of these new blades, while it's a new weapon class technically, they're all based on existing ones, essentially clone characters. Having similar arts, cooldowns, all that stuff. This is essentially a single-handed knuckle claw. Sever likes meat. <laughs> Thanks. Hmm, this is really good. <laughs> My, I had no idea the two of you had so much in common. <laughs> and he likes music. No take backsies. Hey, I love this. They have both in common. I didn't even intend that. Wow. All right, uh, we can't actually see his favorite items yet as we don't have access to those shops. So now that we've got him equipped, I'd like to show you what he's capable of. Sever's first battle skill, Nullify Defense, gives him a chance to annul guard. His second skill, Armor Piercing, giving him a chance to get rid of defense when he attacks. Sever's third battle skill, Heartless Kill, higher damage from surprise attacks. 
That's when he's maxed out. Realistically, it's gonna be more like that at level one. Not quite as awesome. Sever is a strong tank. Keeps aggro pretty well. Good defenses. Surprise damage is uh, most useful on a tank as well because then you don't have to survive the fight quite as long. His level one special, Storm Edge, is an either one hit attack, increased critical damage. Super speedy, useful in time attack. He's not useless when it comes to challenge runs. He has a top art on Zeke, so you could say that he's good at getting fusion combos in as well. That brings us to his level 2 special, Engrave, Ether, 10 hit attack, 3 radius, fierce damage, and increase aggro drop from specials. Strong in chain attacks due to the high hit count, and is just pretty powerful actually. I'm getting kind of weak here, I need to uh, get my evasion going, oh boy, Nora, uh, come and get me. Um, well, okay. His downsides are that even though he has good damage, it's not great damage because his skills don't add to it during battle and he only has two ox core slots. And his other issue, if I can ever get back over to him and use this downside, his level three special, Deathmatch, is an ether three hit attack with radius and increased critical chance as well as pierce damage with a chance of doing a gardenoling attack. Useless secondary effect, since once he's level 5, he has a battle skill that gives him a 100% Gardenal on everything he does anyway. This level 3 special might as well have no secondary effect after he's been leveled up. It's kind of crap. Took me a while to get it going, level 4! Cutting edge, no? Deadly Divide! It's a physical one-hit attack, increased critical chance, pierce damage, and blowdown with no secondary effect. In short, he's a good tank with high damage, holds aggro well, good arts that come out quickly, good level 1 and 2 specials that come out quickly, have nice effects on them, and work well in fusion combos as a result. But his level 3 and 4 specials just suck eggs and you would never use them. It's funny, on my first playthrough, I remembered noticing that Sever was the only character getting no focus at all in that first chapter. And I kept thinking, oh, he's gonna get a cool arc later on and be super important. Nope. <laughs> he's a little more interesting than the story makes him seem. Uh, I think that Sever could be seen as a reflection of Malos. He's the third in the line of Amalthus, Malos, and then Sever. The next step of influence from Malos as his driver makes him just a cold, bloodthirsty animal without any room left for a personality. He de even takes on the physical form of a primal predator and just cares nothing more about than and cares about nothing more than killing. It shows by example of uh, having a blade awaken another blade that was already influenced by a Malthus, how it just trickles down and makes him increasingly messed up. Next, I've gone to the Borardane Consulate, as hopping along all those rooftops allows us to look in through the window and see Consul Dougal just... lost in deep thoughts, like all great men do. Sitting in there uh, as he waits to be dispatched for his fight with us. Seems rather bored, checking his watch a lot. Mm. Ah. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> he was dancing. My power's rising. Consul Dougal drops another pouch expansion kit. This does not mean three pouch items, unfortunately. Only one can be given to each driver. You'll have extras if you've gone out for 100%. Smorag, the flame bringer. Morag? Special Inquisitor Morag of Morardain, the most powerful driver in the Empire, and wielder of Bridget, the most powerful. Blow him down! Come here. Look at that Flesh. face! It's all red! More important that than Nia, cool. more important than Tora, is the bonus EXP that they come with. I'm probably not going to buy the accessory expander kit for Nia, but for Tora, a thousand times yes! Sorry, a thousand times yes, as Rex would say. Expand Tora! He is a growing boy, after all. Uh, best girl fan, what else we got? You can take the Master Scope, I guess. It is the best break-resisting item in the game, but I think it's kind of overkill on Tora, honestly. With his three hits on Cutie Pie, unless we're playing some super strong, high-level giant enemies, 
in the land of challenge. This isn't going to help us at all. We're going to be breaking every use of that art. Similarly, I realized I especially don't need the avant-garde medal on Rex anymore. The fights we're doing are so easy anyway. Overclocking bangle, only one blade. Sunglasses. Wold up, man. A long time ago, there was a city in Gormont known only as the White Chair. It had the oldest and richest history of any city in the land and boasted a fortress many considered impenetrable. Is that right? But the city was destroyed by the Ardanian Empire, razed to the ground until nothing remained. The destruction of the White Chair was what prompted Gormont to surrender their sovereignty to Mor Ardain. But this all happened long before I was born. I don't resent Mor Ardain for what their ancestors did. This gives additional lore on what the history of Gormot is, and he'll only say this for a specific moment in time. If you were to talk to him during Chapter 2, he would not say this, and if you were to talk to him late game, he would talk about refugees instead. So there you go, I didn't know about White Chair. Sever wanted to use meat four times. I was happy to oblige. Love me some protein. Do you like the sound of that? Sever also wanted to attack from behind. Sometimes. Think this'll cut it? Get it? Cut? <laughs> Man, I love the ultimate evil a lot more than I thought I would. Malos, you're the man. You know how to raise a child. We go. What and we with go? that, it's everything there is to do in Gormont that I wanted to take care of. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2! Unfortunately, we're not strong enough to head for the World Tree, even in this universe where we're level 99. But regardless of that, we're going to Uriya and seeing all there is to do there. Which means it's time for us to see an old friend again. See you guys then.